Hey guys, Adam with Aeroworks. I thought I'd cover uh, a brand new thing that came out today. As you may or may not know, DJI just released a brand new software for the Vision, Vision Plus, and the Phantom 2, as well as a new assistant software. So the first thing you'll need to do, of course, is you're going to need to go to the DJI.com website. You're going to go to support. You're going to roll down until you find the copter that you are flying. In this case, uh, we'll, we'll pick the, the Phantom Vision Plus. You're going to hit downloads. And you're going to scroll down until you get to software and drivers. If you've never loaded the software before, you want to make sure that you do download the driver for the appropriate uh, computer you're using first. And then install the latest assistant software. In this case, it's 3.14. And there is a link over here to download the EXE. So we don't need to go into how to do that, but install the EXE. Once you do that, you will have the latest version of the Phantom 2 assistant software. It's the same software that works with the Vision, the Vision Plus, and the Phantom 2. So you don't need to download different versions. And here we are downloading, or we have downloaded 3.14. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's new in the software. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in the Phantom and power that up. Right away we get an update. Now I'm using an older Vision so I've even got more updates than you may even have. Uh, it, it is also showing us here uh, a couple things. One of them being uh, what the updates are about. Some little splash screens here. And it says we're ready to go with the update. So I'm going to go ahead and hit upgrade. Make sure you don't power off. You got a fully charged battery. I'm going to hit yes. And you will notice down at the bottom here, the upgrade happening. Now once that's done and before you press the OK button, power cycle the Phantom to where it's powered off. Then you can hit the OK button. Now power back up again. And let's watch the upgrade screen. OK, we've got 3.08 uh, and there's a uh, central board update from uh, 1.32. Uh, excuse me here, what do we got here? Upgrade to 1.027, so we'll go ahead and let that happen and it's doing it automatically here. And again, upgrade success, please power cycle. So again, power cycle first, hit the OK button, and power back on again. All the time leaving your Phantom connected. All right. Looks like we are running all of the latest versions. So we will go ahead and we'll start at the view screen. And we want to make sure and take a look at what the changes are. And I'll go over those with you right now. So go back to the view screen. Everything here is pretty much the same as it was. Move our sticks around. Everything's looking good there. We'll go ahead and go to the basic screen. And we'll go to mounting. We want to make sure that uh, the appropriate mounting is selected facing forward don't change anything here I'm gonna go to the RC assistant now I'm my all my copters I run in the NASA mode which gives me the fail safe down here um, if you're running in phantom mode you're not gonna have these other modes here uh, you can see my uh, information on my vision plus beginners guide if you want to know what NASA and phantom mode are Now you're gonna see one new version right here now DJI just came out with an upgraded radio that has, and you can see the depiction over here on the side, it has a wheel on the side to allow for tilting. It also has a built-in battery and a battery indicator right on the front of it. So if you have that selected, uh, if, you're, if you purchase that radio or one of the new kits comes with that, you're going to need to make sure you have the right radio selected there. In my case, I'm using the basic radio, and I'm going to go ahead and toggle my switches here. Everything's looking good there. I can go ahead and do a uh, basic calibration by clicking start and moving my sticks all around, corner to corner, back and forth, letting them center, check my X2, and I'll hit finish. That is done. Gains, don't mess with them. If you do, hit the default button. That's all I'm going to say about that. Advanced, okay, let's look at some of the advanced features. So by default, we want it to go home and land, that's on fail safe. We don't want it to land in place because you may be over water or structure, so let leave it to go home and land. I have my IOC enabled, and again, this is something that's only available in the NASA. 
This enables your X2 switch to go to course lock and home lock. Again, there's videos explaining what that does. Battery. Now, there's some uh, questions about this. They do now give individual cell voltages, temperature, discharge times, battery percent. All this information is great if you want to know what's going on with your battery there. They also give you a tip here about discharging and charging your battery every 20 charges. So keep that in mind. I've had some customers saying their batteries are swelling. This can happen when you charge it up and you leave it charged up for an extended period of time. Even a couple of weeks can do that. Here's another one that gets a lot of people. I do not recommend the go home on low battery voltage warning. First of all, you should be monitoring your battery voltage, especially if you're flying a vision. If you're not, uh, what this is gonna do is essentially beeline straight for home no matter where you're at when you hit that critical battery low level. And in some cases, there may be something in the way. So keep an eye on your battery and keep this unchecked. That's my recommendation. Uh, gimbal, again, no, nothing here to change. Um, again, this is all defaulted. Uh, everything's pretty standard there. Limits. Now we have a new tab here, which is great because a lot of people ask about this. Uh, now it looks like by default, uh, well this may not be by default actually, let me correct that. Default, they've actually changed to 394 feet, so they're keeping people under the uh, 400 foot limit. But, and that's fine in my case, I don't need to fly above that. And that's in feet. Uh, but you can change these parameters, you just have to make sure you hit the enter button after you change it. So if I want this to be 500 and I hit enter, um, it's giving me some warnings here that you're agreeing to that, you're not holding anybody liable, but you could change that to, to 500. But I'll set it to default and play by the rules. Flight limits, again, this is just a chart showing you where you're restricted as you fly closer to an airport, the airport being the center. And as you get closer, you get forced down to the ground and to, to where you can't even take off. Now here's the new tab, this is great. So originally 60 feet was the default go home altitude. So if you lost connection or you put it into fail safe, if you were below 60 feet, it would climb to 60 feet and come home. If you were above 60 feet, it would stay at that altitude and come home. But in some cases, you're out at 60 feet, and that may not be enough altitude to clear trees and other obstacles. So now you can actually increase this, let's say to 80 feet, and I'll hit the enter button. That's my new go home altitude. So that's a great new feature they just did. And we're done with all these tabs. Let's go to the tools button. Again, I recommend after any firmware update or any crash, dropping your case or anything that you had minimum, do a basic calibration. Make sure your Phantom's on a level desk or table. Don't touch it. Hit the basic Cali. Say yes. You can see it happens fairly quickly here. And once it gets done, we'll do a quick check IMU status. We got the green check mark there. I click check IMU status, no need to calibrate, it can be skipped because we had a successful uh, calibration. Reset the BTU, this is only if you're using the Bluetooth module, we don't need to worry about that right now. That takes us back to the upgrade screen which we already covered when we first started the video. So everything looks good here, your info screen is essentially what version you're running, nothing else to see here, everything looks good, we're ready to go out and test flight. So uh, keep in mind there's also a new Vision app available for the Vision and Vision Plus. That is, uh, there's a lot of new uh, features that are in the Vision app that you want to take a look at and read through the release notes. You can get to those by opening the Vision app and on your first four icons there's a new screen. Click on that and it'll tell you about what the updates are. Alright guys, hope this helped out and uh, happy flying.